I'm Meg. And I'm Ted. And this is Coffee. Meg and Ted. Woo. You didn't even say it that time. I'll let you take it. Thank you. You're I appreciate okay. that. Meg just got out of Barbie jail. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. This is my favorite outfit I've ever worn. I like it. I like it. I'm wore it on Mother's good. Day. I'm going to wear it again today. I'm going to wear it again at some other point. I love this. I like it. It's like fancy. It is. It's, it's really it's fancy. fancy. Shout out to Jesse James Decker and her adorable line, Kittenish. We have a special. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's not here either. Maybe I next time. Go back. Yeah. yeah they just, I'm going to go back to Nashville. Um, we miss you guys. Devin always misses you guys, honestly. I miss you guys a lot, all the time. Super excited for today because I get to talk more. Yeah. Than usual. And I get to sit and listen more than usual. It's a good dynamic. Yeah. It's funny, when we put out these videos, we do kind of say like, hey, you're going to kind of take this one, or hey, I'm going to take this one, and we'll just like back each other up. Yeah. It's good. It's like a background singer. I'll be a background Not really. singer this time. Kind of like a, we're like a Dan and Shay. Mm -hmm. We're like a Jackson Five with just two people. Yeah. What are some other call two? It. One Direction. They have five people too. The Jonas Brothers. They have three. What well, really two? Let's be honest. There's really only two Jonas. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's really only one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry guys. Okay. Sorry. 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 This week, <laughs> talk about words again and how they impact people. I'm just kidding. This week we're talking about identity. Um, I'm super excited because this is this is a message that I'm super passionate about. Yeah. I'm super something. That, it's it's one of the main things that I focus on when I get to travel and speak. And one of the the biggest messages that a lot of um, I think older men. Um, I know it's like a big thing when it comes to women too, but I think men as well like identity is huge and there's always a soft part a soft spot in men's hearts when it comes to identity yeah because if we're being honest a lot of us have our identity in something that we shouldn't oh my gosh or absolutely. we hide our identity um behind things that we kind of push to the forefront of our identity and so i'm excited to talk about that and um yeah yeah um, I mean, I'm obviously really excited about this topic, too, just because I think it's kind of like the message that the Lord places on my heart when it comes to the social media world and social media journey. It's just really speaking everyone's identity, like speaking the identity that Jesus gave us. I like to speak that over y'all. Um, when Tevin and I, just kind of the topic of identity, if we like think back to it, it's really what sparked this initial sit-down coffee with Megan Teb because it was a follow-up to the 10-day devotional and valuable yeah. where we spoke and really broke down word for word of what God's Word said to you about your identity and who you say you are. Um, so I encourage you, if you never got to read the 10-day devotional on my blog, called them valuable, go back and do it. Um, kind of will take what we're about to say tonight and really break it down into um, a, a level that you can put into action and practice into your life every day. Yeah, and I'm kind of just going to jump right into the topic, and I want to kind of open up more about kind of my life. Hold on, I literally thought you were going to say, let's open up in a word of prayer. I was like, okay, let's open up in a word of prayer. Yeah. Oh Matter my fact, gosh. Lead us in a prayer real quick. Really? Yeah, don't mess up. God's listening. All right, well, Lord, we come to you now, and um, thank you for being just like who you are, and just being so good, Lord, and and giving us our identity, and allowing us to walk through this world and through this life, just knowing that we're yours first and foremost. Give us the words to say, Lord, um, to be able to share with other people, and, and more than anything, speak clearly through us so that others can hear you better. Um, we love you, we praise you, amen. We might start needing to do this. That might be a thing. I like that. Okay. Open my eyes. <laughs> Sorry. I was serious prayer. Ew, I was serious too. Okay, keep going. Okay. Um, serious time. But identity is huge for me because if I look back on my life and a lot of the things that I went through and was going through, it kind of all has to do with identity and falls back all into this, what did you place your identity in? And 
I don't know, I, I told a little bit of my story a while back, um, but early on in my life, I was an athlete and played a lot of sports and was good at them and so was my brother and so I wanted to be like him and so we really just pursued this this life of sports and at a young age that was everything to me yeah. and elementary school and middle school and in middle school is really when I, I put my full identity into sports and wanted to be known as an athlete and everywhere I went there Tevin oh that's Tevin the football player that's Tevin the basketball player and and I was 100% okay with that and I wanted to be known for that. And when I look back and I think about it, I think the reason that I wanted to be known for that most was because I didn't really want to be known and I was scared of the labels that would come in for the other things going on in my life. Right. I was scared that, I didn't want people to know that when I was 11 years old, my dad got diagnosed with a terminal illness and I lived scared to death every day of losing him of not knowing what that was like and just visiting him in the hospital every day and I didn't want people to know that. I didn't want people to know that when that happened my family fell into poverty and we were living off of food stamps and we didn't know if we were going to eat at night sometimes. I didn't want no people to know that I was bouncing around from family to family living with friends. I didn't want people to know that my brother had some brain damage from some concussions in a car accident and was abusive physically, verbally was very abusive to me. And I didn't want people to know that because I was scared that people would label me and that would identify me, that that would become who I was. Like, oh, he's the kid that comes from a broken family or he's the kid and so I was scared to be open about those things. And so at a young age, I put my full identity in who I was as an athlete. And, and then I started to struggle with depression and, and anxiety and I even hit that from most people because I didn't want to be identified. I didn't want that to become who I was. I'd, and it was something that I struggled with but it wasn't who I was. And if you're out there and if you haven't seen the mental illness talk that we did, go check that out. But like your mental illness is not who you are. What you're going through, what you're battling with is not who you are but I didn't understand that at that point. And so, I put my full identity in who I was as an athlete. And I was okay with that because it was going great and had an awesome opportunity to go off and play play football in college. And I remember going off before college and my pastor who I was super close with and I knew who Jesus was and I was going to youth group and I was really plugged in at the church. He said, Tevin, you have an awesome opportunity. And I was like, I, I know like not everybody gets to go play football. And he was like, that's not what I'm talking about. He was like, you can either put your identity in who you are as an athlete, or you can put your identity in Christ and really start to live for him. Yeah. And I went off to college and I was like, I know what I need to do. Like, that, that's who I'm going to be. Like, I'm going to be that the Christian guy. And I went to college and I did it. And when I got to college, I, I just became a football player and placed my identity in that. I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a football player. And labels would start to roll in from people at the school of, oh, like, he just wants the fame, he just wants the glory, like, he wants whatever that has to offer. And even though it wasn't who I was, I let those labels determine who I was. And, and I became that and I started to, to live for myself and for my glory and really place my full identity in who I was as a football player. And, and that was really kind of my life up until that point. And, and I had these dreams of playing in the NFL and I had some chances to, to go on. I felt like they weren't so far away that, that one day soon I would be playing in the NFL and then I'm known as an NFL player and then I'm living my dream, my, everything that I put in from the time that I was little. One day at practice, I went up for a ball on the sideline, and I came down and uh, made a cut up field, and I felt my knee just pop and hyperextend, and everything tear through, and I'm laying on the ground, and my legs just dangling there, and the trainers run up to me, and soon after that, I found out that I'll never play football again, that I had one of the worst knee injuries seen in college football, and, and it broke my heart, and 
I would never be able to step on the field with my brothers again. I would never be able to, to live this dream that I was living again, that, I, that my identity was gone like that. And after that happened, they, they flew me to this doctor that was gonna perform the surgery. And they did some tests and they found out that I had a blood clot and a major artery in my leg from the trauma and that they needed to go in and uh, put a filter on my heart and do surgery there and then go on with the knee surgery. And so they did all of these things and they sent me home and I was just still lost at this point. I was like, where, like, I have no identity now. Yeah. Who am I? Like, I'm not a football player anymore. I'm not the Tevin that I used to be. And they sent me home after the knee surgery and things go wrong with, the, with all of that. And I get rushed to the hospital and my leg is swell, like swollen up and my, my leg's so swollen that all the blood in my body was going to my leg and I was passing out. And so they rushed me to the emergency room and right away they tell me that I was suffering from compartment syndrome and a hematoma and that they needed to give me five blood transfusions to keep me alive, to get enough blood to my heart. And once they get me stabilized, I'm in a hospital room and I'm sitting there with me and my mom. And a doctor walks in and at this point, literally everything's gone. Literally, I felt like I had lost everything. And the doctor comes in and he's like, we need to go into surgery right now to see if there's any chance that we can save the leg. And I just broke down bawling and my mom broke down bawling and it just got to this point where I was like, everything that I put <laughs> my faith in, my identity in is gone. And I'm at this point where I'm hopeless, I'm laying in a hospital bed about to go into surgery, not knowing if I would wake up with a leg or not. And and as they pushed me out of the room, my mom's like, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. And I woke up out of surgery and I was laying in a hospital bed and they had cut my entire leg open and they were gonna have to do surgery on it for two weeks and I was gonna be in the hospital for a long time. And during that time in the hospital, I really was battling. And I just kept remembering, like, God's got a plan, God's got a plan. And people would come in and they would tell me that they love me and that God's got a plan for my life and it, it was awesome and it meant the world to me and I really started to to believe it but I was like I just don't get it and I remember sitting in the hospital bed and I was everybody had left the room and one of my friends was sitting there and I was like I was I was loved for being a football player that's who I was like I don't have that anymore and I remember that friend saying, you are more than just a football player. You are more than that. And he started to explain to me, like, he was like, if your identity is in football, yeah, that's gone. But there's an identity that, that Jesus has given you. There's an identity that says you are more than an athlete. You are more than a broken family. You are more than a depression. You are more than your insecurity. You are, you are more than all of that. You are a son. And, and that really just clicked with me and I started to believe and I was like, wow. And, and when it comes to identity, I think so many of us put our identity in something that can go away in the blink of an eye. That can disappear, that can leave you feeling hopeless. That, that can just walk away from you, whether that be a relationship that can disappear, whether that be a business, a job, a family, a, whatever it may be, a, a kid, a, a sport, education, beauty, whatever we put our identity in, it can be gone in the blink of an eye. But there's only one thing in this world that you can place your identity in that's the same today, tomorrow, and forever, and that's who Jesus says that you are. If Jesus died for you and looked at you and said, no, you are more than that mistake you have made. You are more than a broken family. You are more than just an injured athlete. You are more than the insecurities that tell you you're not pretty enough, you're not good enough. You are more than that relationship that's left you heartbroken. You are so much more than all of those things. And Jesus, you are his. And when it comes to identity, we can't know who we are until we know whose we are. Absolutely.
And when we realize that we are Jesus's, and we can place our identity in something that will never leave us, never forsake us, our whole life can change. And that's something that I learned in that season when everything was taken from me. And I realized that when everything was taken from me, I realized who is my everything and who he says I am. And from that point on, my life has been completely changed. I was laying in a hospital bed, the most broken point in my life, and I felt this peace come into my life, this joy come into my life that I'd never felt before. It says no.
a broken person in need of a savior, and I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do that for them. And that honestly is where confidence comes from. You know, ladies, when you get sucked into social media and you think like, oh, like her life looks so perfect, her pictures are so perfect, and everything's so curated, and like, oh, like they're so much prettier than me, or like, there's just, I've been there. I've so been there. And there's been a time where I've got to take a step back and say, no, this has gotta go for a minute. Because yeah. I need to sit in the presence of my savior and allow him to remind me of exactly who he says I am, and that is enough. Because you're gonna strive in life, you're gonna come up empty handed. No relationship, no no scholarship, no no nothing in this world will satisfy like Jesus. And until you understand that and recognize that, you're gonna live a very empty life, wandering, just wandering around for the next thing to find your identity in. Yeah. So it's crucial that you understand the weight of what happened on the cross, because that's where your identity was born. It was on the cross, and the moment that you say yes to Him, you you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and to dig in God's word, we can say all these words to you guys, we can share, Tim can share his testimony, which is so beautiful, a, a perfect picture of God's redemptive grace, I can share my testimony, I can stand on a soapbox and tell you how loved and beautiful and worthy you are, but until you dig in God's word and you see those truths and you understand them and you apply them to your life, it's just going to be another empty word, like, yeah. you have got to go and dig and look got the blog there's there's pinterest i mean pinterest is filled with with those things that people have put in there go straight into god's word that is where you're going to understand your true identity because you'll understand the weight of what jesus did for us and i think that is where your identity is is established that's so true so true and i just would challenge challenge everybody i don't even want to say challenge but remind everybody that there is a place where you can place your identity that will be the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And there's only one place, and that's in Jesus. And if you've never made that decision and you want to know how to take that step and place your identity in Him, message one of us, reach out to us. Um, we'd love to help you move forward in taking that step and saying, I, I want to place my identity in Him. And I'm not saying this could be somebody that has surrendered their life to Christ. Like, yeah. It's one thing to know Jesus. I knew Jesus. I, I knew him pretty well. Yeah. But I never gave my life to him. I never surrendered and said, no, I am yours. My identity is in you. And I think that's a huge step. And yeah. so I would challenge you to, to take that step, to, to place your identity in who he says you are and, and, and who he is. Take that step because it's it's amazing and you won't be disappointed. Yeah, and your life will never be the same. And you so, want to be met with lots of challenges. Yeah. Lots lots of controversy and lots of like feeling like you're in an uphill battle, but I promise nothing will satisfy you like Jesus and yeah. your identity in him. So we love you guys. We love you. If you'd like to have said, contact us if you need some encouragement or you just want to talk a little bit further about this topic. But um yeah, we love y'all. We'll, we'll see you next, see you next week. week.